Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's anti-aircraft soldier, the 1989 Backblast. Backblast makes his first comic book appearance in the old mobile comic run of G.I. Joe in issue number 92 and makes his first animated appearance in the 1989 Deke animated five-part miniseries Operation Dragonfire in part five. Now I might as well get this out of the way before the comment section gets clogged, but yes, Backblast is one of those code names that sounds like you uh, don't want to stand behind them during chilly night. First let's take a look at Backblast accessories, starting with his triple missile launching system. As you can see, I have him holding it a little bit awkwardly, but there is a reason for that, and in a bit I'll show you different ways that he can actually hold it. But taking a look at it, the missile launcher itself is a two-piece design. The main uh, electronics and holding portion is right here. And the barrels, all three of them, are all stuck together. With the three missiles, next he has a monocular, a great little device for sighting in his missile launcher. It's very much like uh, the 1984 Thunder's monocular but it's a different sculpt altogether. Next, he comes with a knife, which actually has a sheath on his bicep. That's really cool. And the knife itself is very nicely detailed. Finally, he comes with a bandolier, basically a bullet belt. Why he actually comes with this, I have no idea, as he does not come with any type of machine gun. This is the type of belt which I would actually give to the 1988 Armadillo, the Rolling Thunder driver, as he is pictured with a bullet belt, but he doesn't actually come with one. So this is a great way of actually giving him that extra detail and you're not really missing anything by taking it away from Backblast. Now this is typically how I would pose Backblast, on one knee and holding the missile base with both hands. The problem with this is, as you can see, that triangular piece on the base is actually meant to be a type of a, a shoulder brace. It's, it's meant to actually go on perhaps his right shoulder, I guess. The problem with that is, as you can see, properly holding it and angling it, this thing is actually near his head here. So that's probably not how the uh, sculptors or designers had intended this for to, to go, but unfortunately there's no real way to actually do this properly simply because his arms just don't have enough articulation. He really needed articulation at the wrists in order to hold the uh, handles on the base properly. While there were a few manned portable ground-to-air missile systems over the years, this thing I believe resembles the Mistral missile system the most. It was also released around the same time that this figure would have been developed, so that makes sense too. Overall, I really like the way Backblast looks, especially just as a single action figure without his accessories. When you think about it, his big missile launcher covers up his face, and the bullet belt, if you have it on him, covers up his entire chest, and that's rather unfortunate because, unlike a lot of other missile men on both the G.I. Joe and Cobra side, he isn't wearing a brightly colored protective suit. He is mostly wearing um, your typical army greens and blacks. Starting at the top, 
he has a helmet with which has netting over it. That's meant for like camouflage. Basically, <laughs> you're supposed to stick uh, leaves and stuff like that onto your helmet. It's kind of old school, considering this guy was released in 1989. You would think that it would be the more updated fabric with slits on it. But whatever. He is also wearing what looks like uh, earphones here, just to uh, protect his ears. Of course, he has those permanently molded uh, shoulder pads to rest the missile launcher on. It's rather unfortunate that the missile launcher can't be connected to his back for storage. He always has to be either holding it or just having it uh, down by his side when he's not holding it in his hands. Of course, you have that big Go Army symbol on his tank top here. Uh, very interesting. I, I think, I'm not sure if the, um, the Go Army was really a the recruitment slogan. It was back in 89. It was definitely part of the Go Army Beat Navy Army Football Rivalry. I guess nowadays this would be GoArmy.com. Of course, down here he has a little, um, little notepad with uh, some sort of uh, <laughs> math equations there, sculpted on the side, which is really hard to see because it's not picked out in paint. Is the pen which he uses to write that. Now, of course. It means that you're, if you're leading him in your typical one knee pose, he always has to be like this because uh, that way he can read his uh, stuff here. However, if you take a good look at it, this is actually upside down to his vision here. The only thing right side up would be the um, long division symbol here. It's very strange. I'm not exactly entirely sure why he would even need to be writing equations down because it's not like he's um, calculating the, the parabola of a mortar shell or anything. These are missiles. They're supposed to lock on by themselves. Most of the uh, equations are supposed to be done in a computer in the base of his missile launcher itself. He doesn't need to do that by himself. Of course, he has like knee pads and stuff like that again. Very, uh, very practical for having him pose like this. And he does have a little pistol there for self-defense. Rather odd that they didn't give him a pistol, but they gave him a knife, which is, is pretty cool. I'll, I'll have to admit that. Very interesting also that uh, despite the fact that he is a missile man and should be wearing some protection, I mean, he is wearing protection on his ears and his knees, but the fact of the matter is, is that his arms are sort of bare. I'm guessing, however, that that's meant to evoke the fact that he's really strong and can hold up, which I would guess would be almost like a 100 pound missile launcher by himself. In 1989, there were a lot of new versions of older characters, like a new version of Snake Eyes, Stalker, Deep Six, However, there were a few characters that were brand new, but had military operation specialties which evoked the line of a classic older figure, kind of like Downtown, who was a mortar man, but from the neck up, you could kind of say that he could have been a new version of an older character, like Short Fuse. And a lot of, a lot of collectors tend to think that Backblast could have been a new version of Bazooka. Now, I can totally see it in the head here. Uh, this totally looks like an evolution of the same guy. And of course, he has some uh, special stuff on his chest there. In this case, it's more of a, a sports jersey, and uh, this guy is wearing more of a uh, army recruitment uh, type of deal here. But other than that, they could totally have been a new version of Bazooka. What do you guys think? The G.I. Joe line had a lot of missile men. However, it isn't until we get seven years into the line that we get our first anti-aircraft specialist. Most of the uh, missile men in the G.I. Joe line are anti-armor. However, you could say that perhaps the 1987 Fast Draw could have been an anti-aircraft uh, missile man as well. His file card doesn't really go into specifics as to what the missiles are for. It does say that he fights against stuns 
but those are light infantry vehicles. They're, they're not even armor themselves. So I guess you could say that he sort of takes over for him, but I'd say that the missile systems are vastly different. Of course, after we get Backblast, we also get our coastline defender, Rampart, in 1990. Now, his missiles, well, extremely small, are actually meant to be uh, fired against other missiles. Basically, he's an interception specialist. So, I was wondering exactly who the rival on the Cobra side for Backblast would be, and I came to the conclusion that we really don't get an anti-aircraft Cobra soldier for a very long time. So, yeah, a lot of people would speculate that, yeah, he would go up against basically anybody who had missiles. But, like the Heat Viper, he's basically an anti-tank trooper. And even a later figure, like the 1990 Metalhead, again, he is an anti-armor trooper, not an anti-aircraft trooper. And his missiles are, well, I guess, designed that way. Even though you could basically just pretend you know, uh, whatever the missiles you want them to do, can do. It isn't until 1992 that we get the Flak Viper, who was Cobra's first anti-aircraft specialist. If you're looking for a backblast on the aftermarket, I do have to say that he isn't one of the cheapest figures to find, especially in the 1989 range, but he isn't the most expensive either. But as you can see, he comes with a lot of different parts in order to make him complete. And unfortunately, there are a few things that you need to look out for. Especially the Go Army symbol on his chest is very easy to rub off. The knife is something which is almost always missing. And unfortunately, the base for the missile launcher is something which breaks very easily. The parts which hold the tubes on are easy to crack off, and so are both the handles and even this uh, triangular piece on the back here. There are things that you always have to look out for. I would even go so far as to say that if you find one which has uh, maybe stress marks on the barrels, uh, barrel holders, I should say, that you should probably steer clear of it because those will eventually break. Try to find one which is uh, in very good condition. But, like I said, it's sort of a medium value type of figure on the aftermarket so far, so there are actually quite a few of these on the aftermarket, and it shouldn't be that hard to piece one together if you need to. don't want to stand behind him during chilly night. What I'm trying to imply is that he farts. Overall, I really like the way Backblast look. Ugh. 
There's actually nothing in his file card to suggest that that detect the. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.